Welcome back viewers. I am Dr. Abhik Devnath, consultant urologist, endourologist, andrologist, laparoscopic surgeon and kidney transplant surgeon at Pace Hospitals, Hyderabad. Today we will be discussing about a simple yet important topic which is urinary tract infection or UTI. UTI is the inflammation of the urinary tract or what is called as the urothelium because of invasion by bacteria. Urinary tract infection are commonly classified into two types, either in the form of their location or site where it is involved, site in the sense in which part of the urinary tract it is involved. If it involves the bladder, it is called cystitis. If it involves the kidneys, it is called pyelonephritis. In males, there are additional entities called epididymitis or epididyma orchitis or orchitis as well as prostatitis. It can also be classified in the form of whether they are complicated or uncomplicated. A simple urinary tract infection that is infection in the bladder which is called cystitis in an adult woman is an uncomplicated urinary tract infection. Complicated urinary tract infection occurs when urinary tract infection occurs in either children or in pregnancy or in elderly or in case of diabetic or immunocompromised patients or in case of men or in those where symptoms persist for more than seven days despite treatment as well as in those in which there has been a history of catheterization or urinary tract instrumentation. So in general urinary tract infection is a broad topic. It can affect almost anybody across all age groups. Let us consider the usual uh, scenario in which urinary tract infection occurs in an adult woman. In this case, we have to understand that the main cause of infection is either the infection caused by a virulent organism, that means a bacteria which has a tendency to cause infection and inflammation and the second is decreased host immunity. That means the local immunity as well as the systemic immunity, especially here we give importance to the local immunity. If it comes down, then the bacteria gets the opportunity to cause infection and inflammation. So usually decreased local immunity occurs when there is lack of hygiene or when there is a bowel problem or when there is diabetes or any sort of immunosuppression. Apart from this, it can also occur when there is an hormonal imbalance in the form of, let us say in case of postmenopausal women, where the estrogen amount is less and which hampers the local immunity. And coming to the bacterial virulence, we can say that if uh, there is inadequate treatment of a urinary infection by either an inappropriate or by uh, a decreased dose or by uh, decreased duration of the antibiotic which is given, or it can be in the form of a bacteria which has caused infection in a hospital setting in which they are inherently resistant to commonly used antibiotics. If there is inadequate treatment, then that microorganism or bacteria develops resistance towards that antibiotic or a group of antibiotics. In that case, that organism can cause a much more severe infection than normal because of its increased virulence. In the previous question, I have discussed the cause of urinary tract infection in general, particularly in case of a cystitis which occurs in an adult woman. In case of children, I would say that there are three very important causes of UTI. The first thing is an any anatomical abnormality in the urinary tract system. So it can be in the form of either a posterior urethral valve or it can be in the form of pelvic ureteric junction obstruction or it can be in the form of duplication of the ureter. All these are anatomical abnormalities in which a part of the uh, urinary system becomes dilated and uh, because of usually because of a distal obstruction the dilatation uh, or the dilated part of the urinary system will have stasis of urine and because of the stasis or impaired drainage of urine 
there will be infection. Apart from this, there are other physiological factors as well. One of the most important factors includes something called as vesicouretric reflux or VUR. So, usually urine comes from top to down, from the kidney towards the outside, towards the bladder and then followed by towards the outside. But in case of VUR, during voiding especially, the urine tends to reflux back from the bladder into the kidneys. So, this reflux can lead to predisposition to urinary tract infection as well as infection to the kidneys in the form of pyelonephritis. Apart from this, in some children, there can be abnormalities with the functioning of the bladder itself, which is called neurological or neurovesical dysfunction. In such patients also, where there is a neurological cause, there can be stasis of urine or high pressures during voiding or storage, which can cause urinary tract infection. Apart from this, we should also not forget about an important predisposing factor which is the urinary tract stone disease. If there is stone disease in children, the stones are a harbinger of infection and it has nidus in which the bacteria tend to lodge and keep growing. So, this is an important cause of urinary tract infection which we should keep in mind. The common symptoms of urinary tract infection includes burning during passing urine along with passage of foul smelling urine, urgency, frequency and mild reddish color in the urine which is due to passage of blood. Apart from that, if it is a complicated UTI involving the kidneys, prostate or testis, it can cause fever as well. So, in men or women, the common symptoms include frequency in urination, urgency and passage of foul smelling urine. Along with that, there is burning sensation in passing urine and occasional passage of blood or red tinged urine. Apart from this, there can be fever, especially when there is infection of the kidneys which is called pyelonephritis. And in men, especially when the infection is localized to the testis, to the spermatic cord or to the prostate, there can be confined pain along with fever and chills. The most important complication of UTI is a scar to the kidney. So, when the UTI or causing organism or bacteria ascends from the bladder towards the kidney and can cause secondary infection of the kidney which is called pyelonephritis which presents in the form of fever, chills, flank pain and passage of foul smelling urine or along with passage of pus cells in the urine which is called pyuria and bacteriuria. In such patients, it is very likely that when the infection heals, there is a scarring of the parenchyma of the kidney and ultimately this leads to decrease in the function of the kidney, which is one. Another thing is, if the infection causing organism persists, then it can cause a recurrent urinary tract infection. With every infection episode, there is hampering of the quality of life of the patient. UTI diagnosis is mostly clinical and along with that the supportive tests that we commonly do includes a urine culture and sensitivity along with that a routine and microscopy of the urine. Usually uh, we do not need any imaging tests but if there are signs and symptoms which suggest that it could be a pyelonephritis or a complicated UTI then an imaging is necessary to rule out any other problem or issues associated with the kidney like hydronephrosis or uh, presence of a stone or presence of a perinephric collection or abscess. Apart from this, an x-ray KUB can also done to see for or look for a stone in the kidney. CT and MRI and radionuclide scanning are also done but the scenarios are different and usually performed uncommonly especially in the setting of either an abscess formation or systemic infection or in cases in which the infection does not resolve despite 48 to 72 hours of antibiotics. The treatment of UTI is fairly simple. It is important to kill the organism completely and eradicate it from the body by antimicrobial therapy. So, a urine culture sensitivity test is sent which should be a midstream urine culture. 
Apart from that, as soon as the urine culture is sent, an empirical antimicrobial therapy or antibiotic is started depending upon the usual local uh, bacterial sensitivity protocol. The usual antibiotic that is given in urinary tract infection, especially the uncomplicated types, includes either a fluoroquinolone or a cotrimoxazole or phosphomycin. The duration of the antibiotic is usually 3 to 5 days if uncomplicated. Most important step in the prevention of UTI is first the eradication of the first UTI because most commonly we see that due to inadequate treatment of a current UTI it tends to recur or the infection tends to persist. So to prevent another episode of an UTI it's very important to adequately treat the current episode of UTI. Apart from this some common measures include the genital hygiene especially when I am talking about UTI or uncomplicated cystitis in case of adult women, it's important to maintain genital hygiene. Apart from that, uh, to control the sugars, that is a good glycemic control in case of diabetic patients and to maintain adequate hydration status. As such, there is no diet prescribed for UTI patients, but what I would suggest is if a patient is diabetic, definitely to control the sugars, strict glycemic control is required. So for them, a strict diabetic diet is necessary. Apart from that, a good balanced diet with uh, fresh fruits and vegetables should do to maintain the pH, adequate pH of the urine. Apart from that, it has been shown that especially in adults, cranberry extracts or cranberry juice or cranberry fruit, it helps to decrease the recurrence of UTI. And adequate hydration is a must. UTI can be dangerous because UTI, if it ascends to the kidney, that means if it becomes a complicated UTI, it can cause organ damage by causing a scarring, especially to the kidneys. And with recurrent UTI bouts, the kidney scarring can ultimately lead to loss of function of the kidney. Usually, UTI requires treatment with an adequate course of antibiotic and usually it does not settle by itself but of course with symptomatic treatment and hydration or maybe some commonly used antispasmodic medications, the symptoms may get under control. But for the eradication of the bacteria, antibiotic is almost always necessary. UTI is actually common in women as compared to men because of the anatomical nature of the reproductive and the urinary tract. So, as we all know that in women, the urethra, that is the passage or the conduit of urine, which is there below the bladder, is very short. It is about 3 to 4 centimeters in length. Secondly, it is very closely opposed or very closely located to the, the urinary tract or what we say the urethra is very close to the elementary tract or the rectum. That means the urethral opening is very close to the anal opening in case of a woman. So it's very common or it's very usual for a fecal organism or bacteria from the elementary tract to come and contaminate or infect the urinary tract in a woman. As mentioned, women are at higher risk of UTI as compared to men, which is natural because of their short urethra and because the urethra is closely located towards the uh, or very closely opposed to the elementary tract or the rectum. Apart from that, children who have anatomic abnormalities and those who have neurogenic bladders or have spinal dysraphism or they have VUR, they are commonly at risk of developing UTI. Commonly those who have urinary tract abnormalities in the form of either stones or decreased immunity either in the form of immunosuppressive medications or maybe if they are diabetics, are very at a very high risk of developing urinary tract infection. 
Yes, antibiotics are the primary treatment of urinary tract infection. Since this is caused by infection of a bacteria, antibiotic will kill and eradicate the bacteria if given appropriately. Urinary tract infection is a very common illness and it can be treated almost by any clinician, any physician. However, I would suggest that if there is any suspicion of a complicated UTI, then primarily it should be treated by a urologist.